afternoon and welcome our viewers from across the globe today and thank you for being part of this show. Now I want to say that there are speeches that define uh, a moment. Speeches are in categories. There are speeches that define a vision. There are speeches that define the future of a people. There are also speeches that address the present day reality of a people. Now in this category, we have, I have a dream, a famous speech by Martin Luther King Jr. In this category also, we have a speech of Nelson Mandela after he became the president of South Africa. In this category, we also have the speech of General Moritala Mohammed, the uh, head of state of Nigeria, who gave a speech at the uh, African Union Summit, that is the former, um, the OAU Summit in Addis Ababa, and that speech galvanized the whole of Africa against apartheid, the apartheid regime. We also know that the former president of the United States, President Barack Obama, he once gave a speech that was the turning point of his political career. Yes, we all still refer to that speech today. Winston Churchill, the wartime uh, Prime Minister of, of uh, the UK, he once gave a speech that galvanized the entire population of the UK against the Nazis. JFK, the late President of the United States, he once gave a speech that defined the American dream. Now, these speeches are still being discussed today. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the speech of Mamadi Dumbuya. Mamadi Dumbuya is the head of state of Guinea. He gave this speech in the recently concluded UN General Assembly. I mind you, the credit for this clip that you're about to see, that credit belongs to the United Nations. Nipro. We are neither pro nor anti-American. Nipro. We are neither pro nor anti-Chinese. Nipro. Nor pro or anti-French. Nipro. Nor pro or anti-Russian. Nipro. Nor pro or anti-Turkish. We are simply pro-African. That is all. Sometimes place us under the influence of the Americans. Sometimes under that of the British. Sometimes the French, the Chinese, or the Russians, and even the Turks. We are neither pro nor anti-American. We are neither pro nor anti-Chinese, nor pro or anti-French, nor pro or anti-Russian, nor pro or anti-Turkish. We are simply pro-African, that is all. Placing us under the influence of this or that power is an insult. It is contempt and racism towards a continent of more than 1 billion 300 million people. It is important that in this prestigious and influential assembly, we understand clearly definitively that the era of the old Africa is over. With a population of more than 1 billion Africans, around 70% of whom are young people, young people who are completely free, open-minded, open to the world, and determined to take their destiny into their own hands. The time has come to realize that the structures, the rules from the post-war era, established in the absence of our states, which did not yet exist at the time, are obsolete. 
This is the end of an unbalanced, an unjust era where we had no say in the matter. Africa, ladies and gentlemen, is suffering from a governance model, a model that is certainly good and effective for the West, which developed it over the course of its history, but which is difficult to incorporate and adapt to our realities, our customs, and our environment. Alas, I have to say that the graft did not take. I know that when I say this, many will immediately say to themselves, oh, another warmonger who wants to wring the neck of democracy, or another soldier who wants to impose dictatorship. However, I want to say very clearly, without hypocrisy, without pretense, eye to eye, we are all aware that this democratic model that you have so insidiously, skillfully imposed on us after the La Bolle summit in France, something you've been imposing almost religiously, this model does not work. Various economic and social indices demonstrate this plain and clear. This is not a value judgment on democracy itself. Believe me, this is just taking stock of the situation. It's a balance sheet. Over several decades of chaotic experimentation, with this model in our environment, we can make this observation. This was a period full of nothing but political games. And this, of course, has been to the detriment of what is essential, namely the economy and the local processing of our natural resources. Allow me to take this truth exercise a little further. Through my short but very intense experience of managing a state, Guinea, I have come to better understand the extent to which this model has, above all, contributed to maintaining a system of exploitation and plunder of our resources by others. And a rampant corruption of our elites. So... What a speech. In that speech, he talked about foreigners defining the African agenda and boxing us in. This is one of the primary reasons why we set up this channel to give voice to the African voice. Yes, to tell the other side of the story because one-line narratives and one-line stories are dangerous for us African people. He talked about the corruption of the African elite, who the moment they get into office, they get, they get elected into power, they begin to protect their own interests, and then they begin to also protect the interests of their foreign masters. He talked about the unsuitability of Western democratic model in Africa. It is a model that does not take into consideration the African reality. It doesn't take into consideration the African ways of life, our customs and our traditions. And I want to say clearly that the Chinese do not practice Western liberal democracy. Yet the Chinese are doing well. The people of the Middle East, they do not practice Western demo democratic uh, 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 system. Yet they are doing well. And nobody's imposing anything on them. Nobody's imposing anything on the Chinese people. Now, His Ex Excellency Dumbuya also talked about the need to address the economic and developmental challenges of our people, the need to reduce poverty levels, provide critical infrastructure, generate employment for our teeming youths that make up 75% of the continent's 1.3 billion inhabitants. That is the African reality. The reality of Africa is not being pro-British, uh, 
or being anti-British, being pro-French or being anti-French, being pro-America or being anti-America, being pro-China or being anti-China, pro-Russia or not being pro-Russia. That's not the African reality. The African reality is the need to address the peculiar uh, situation and the peculiar circumstances of our people. The African reality is about addressing the peculiar needs of our people. The African reality is laying emphasis on the African agenda. I want to thank you for watching. And if you have enjoyed our content, please consider to subscribe. Please consider to also like, consider to share, consider to send in comments because when you do all this, you help this channel to grow. Also, consider to be a member of this channel. Your membership is a way uh, of demonstrating support for what we do. So I invite you to be a member. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. Bye.